Fat Tulip was fed up. I know, he thought, I'll have a party. I'll invite Cyril and Doris and Angela and her twin sister Maureen. So he phoned them up. Uh, hello, uh, do you fancy coming to a party at my place tonight? We'll have fizzy drinks and disco dancing and pass the postman and chase the parcel. But above all, we'll have lashings and lashings of scrumptious party food. And Cyril and Doris and Angela and her twin sister Maureen said yes, they'd love to come. Oh, great, thought Fat Tulip. Oh, no, thought Fat Tulip. I've told them all that there'll be lashings and lashings of scrumptious party food, but I've hardly got any food left at all in the house and the shops are closed today. Ah! Um, there's this sponge cake I got from my Uncle Dick. Doris loves sponge cake. I'll put that in the cupboard on the bottom shelf. Uh, that's not enough though, is it? What else is there? Jelly. Cyril is crazy about jelly. I'll make some jelly. So he broke up the jelly, poured some hot water in, stirred it up, tipped it into a jelly mould. One of those rabbit ones. Have you seen them? They're good, aren't they? And he put it on the middle shelf. Fine. Anything else? Uh, custard powder. The twin sisters are dotty about custard. I'll make some custard. So, got some custard, put some water in, stirred it all up, put it in a bowl, and put the custard on the top shelf. That'll be enough, said Fat Tulip, and he sat down on his chair, exhausted. <sighs> But he'd only been sitting down for a few minutes when he heard a <whistles> noise coming from the cupboard. Hmm, he thought. What can be doing that? So he went to have a look. Nothing on the bottom shelf except the sponge. Only there are a lot of little footprints across the sponge as though someone had been walking across it. Nothing on the middle shelf except for the jelly. And on the top shelf there was nothing except the custard. But except right through the middle of the custard, there are a whole load of breaststroke marks as though someone had been swimming a wits before the custard had set. Ah, oh, thought Fat Tulip. I wonder who's done that. He went to sit down again. And just as he sat down again, he heard another... <whistles> from the cupboard. So, got a newspaper, wound it up, and he tiptoed over to the cupboard. Open the door. Nothing on the bottom shelf except the sponge cake. Nothing on the middle shelf except the jelly. Nothing on the top shelf except the custard. Whoever's doing this, thought Fat Tulip, is pretty tricky. But I can be even trickier. I'm just going outside to water the dandelions, he said. But he didn't really go outside. He just went and slammed the door and tiptoed back in again. Tiptoed over to the cupboard. Nothing on the bottom shelf except the sponge cake. Nothing on the middle shelf except the jelly. Nothing on the top shelf except the custard. But on top of the custard, sitting right in the middle of it, was the biggest, fattest mouse you've ever seen in your life. Gotcha! Wiggly, waggity, wang, wang, wong! Went Fat Julep. And had he got the mouse? No, he hadn't got the mouse. Because the mouse had jumped off the top shelf, onto the middle shelf, onto the jelly. Zaggity, woo, wah, zammy, 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 zoo! Went Fat Julep. Did he get the mouse? No, he didn't get the mouse because the mouse had jumped off the jelly, right onto the bottom shelf, onto the sponge cake. Hazoggity, waggity, wing, wang! And had he got 
the mouse? No, he hadn't got the mouse because the mouse was just about to jump off the bottom shelf when Fat Tulip got his bowl, put it under the bottom shelf, the mouse jumped in, he unrolled the paper, and there he got the mouse trapped inside the bowl. Inside the bowl, the mouse wasn't very happy. Mm. Don't like it in here much, said the mouse. And he started to walk round. And he walked faster and faster and faster. And then he started to run until he was going <laughs> like a little motorbike. Outside the bowl, Fat Tulip thought, what's that <laughs> noise? I just have a look. And very slowly and very cautiously, Fat Tulip lifted the edge of the newspaper and the mouse went out of the bowl and Fat Tulip went I gotcha, I gotcha, I gotcha, I gotcha and the mouse went and Fat Tulip went gotcha, I gotcha, gotcha, I gotcha and the mouse went straight into his hole and Fat Tulip went missed ya and he staggered over to his seat, totally exhausted, and fell fast asleep. The little mouse waited until he was absolutely sure that Fat Tulip was fast asleep, and then he called all his mates together, all the other mice who lived down the mouse holes, and he said to them, Come and have a look and see what's happened in the cupboard. And all the mice trooped across the kitchen floor. And they had a look in the cupboard. Look at that, said the mouse. And they all went, yeah! He said, you'd see all that jelly and that custard and that sponge cake all over the walls and all over the shelves. I did that. <laughs> said the other mice. Poor old fat tulip, said the mouse. Are you fast asleep? <laughs> And then the littlest mouse of all said, Yeah, well, she's, she's very funny. It's highly amusing. But poor old fat tulip, hey? And all the other mice said, What? And the littlest mouse of all said, Well, I mean, you know, he was going to have a party and he didn't have any food. And I mean, well, we have messed it up a bit for him, haven't we? And all the other mice said, Yeah, well, I suppose we have, really. And the littlest mouse said, Well, shall we help him out then? And all the mice said, Yeah, all right. So the littlest mouse said, Why, well, give Fat Tulip's bucket and bring it over here. So all the mice trooped across the kitchen floor and they picked up Fat Tulip's bucket and they carried it over to the cupboard. Oi, said the littlest mouse. Now get all the little bits of sponge cake from all, all over the cupboard in your paws and chuck it in the bucket. So they got all the sponge cake and they threw it in the bucket. Oi, said the littlest mouse. Now get all the jelly and chuck it in the bucket. So they got all the little bits of jelly and they threw them into the bucket. And then the littlest mouse said, Oi, now get all the custard and chuck it in the bucket. So they got all the bits of custard and they threw it into the bucket. Oi, mice, said the littlest mouse. Now take the bucket and stick it on the kitchen table. So they all carried the bucket across the floor. One, two, three, ooh! And stuck it on the kitchen table. Now, yeah, said the littlest mouse, let's all disappear down our mouse holes. Fat Tulip was still fast asleep when suddenly he heard... Ring! Oh, what's that? said Fat Tulip, who is it? And he lumbered over to have a look. And it was Cyril and Doris and Angela and her twin sister Maureen. Hi, they said, we've come for the party. Oh no, thought Fat Tulip, I haven't got any food. Suddenly, Doris saw the bucket. Oh, whatever's that, she said. It's party food, isn't it, especially for us? Fat tulip, it's sponge cake. I love sponge cake. And then Cyril came over as well and he went, 
that tulip, you have made us some jelly. You know how much I like jelly, don't you? And then Angela and her twin sister Maureen raced over and they said, Mmm, mmm, oh, custard. Mmm, we're absolutely crazy about custard. It's a trifle, isn't it? You've made us an enormous party trifle. And Fat Tulip had no idea at all how it had got there. But he didn't say anything. And they had the most fantastic party. They had fizzy drinks and disco dancing and pass the postman and chase the parcel. But above all, they had lashings and lashings of trifle. <laughs> Wop.